Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can see here, I am joined by the one and only, well, okay, not the one and only, but one of many colourful music stands who's going to be helping me later in this video. I can't be bothered to put it up and take it down between takes, so it's just going to stay there for now. <laughs> so yes, this video is about how I use revision guides to revise. So I have bought the SIA student guides for chemistry and biology AS1 so far. And then I'll get AS2 once we get onto that in class, but we're not supposed to get onto that till after Christmas. So for now, this is all I need. And obviously this has a lot of information in it, a lot of diagrams. Oh wow, interesting. That need to be learned. And so I'm gonna show you how I use these revision guides to their full potential, I feel, and how I use colour and annotation to revise from these. Now this is, I would call this a stage two or stage three revision task. Stage one is writing notes. Stage two is converting notes into flashcards, etc. micro posters for biology. However, this can also be done in stage two or stage three. Stage four, what I would say is like making massive posters because that's kind of like your last resort S thing. And then there's obviously stage five, which is testing, which is past papers. So yeah, those are my five stages of revision. I should write that down. That's pretty good. That was off the top of my head, but that's just the order I do things in. But yes, this is stage two or stage three process. I should make a video on that. Idea. Whenever you're watching this video, a video on the five stages of revision is probably already out. So if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Okay, so this is how I do the process of highlighting and annotating my revision guides. Step one, I have assigned a key to highlight our colours. And I'm keeping it simple with three colours because more colours and it just gets overly complicated. And this key is quite... What's the word? Expandable, rough, not entirely. It doesn't have. It doesn't have to be exact. That's really what I'm trying to say. So I have my three colors. I have my yellow highlighter. I have a pink highlighter, and I have a green highlighter. And this is what they're all for. Yellow is for highlighting bulk information or just information in the text. Pink is for highlighting definitions. And green is for gra like diagram highlighting, but not all the time. But usually green is for diagram. Green is like the third color. The main one is yellow. And the second one is, the second major color is pink. And then green is just an extra one. So I am going to show you essentially me highlighting and explaining myself highlighting some of my biology notes from the biology revision guide. So... Let's go do that now. As you can see, here in this diagram, I have already highlighted that I am um, these water molecules, and I've also highlighted these ester bonds here, just to let myself know. Those are the water molecules that go, that get pulled out of here and go into there. And also, they form that, they are what forms the ester bonds, so they are also, you know, highlighted in green, green for diagrams. Now I'm going to go through this next part and highlight it. So triglycerides with unsaturated hydrocarbon chains have lower boiling points, I think. Well, okay, I should probably learn that. And all the sort of chains have lower boiling points than saturated. And then I'm just going to highlight it saturated because that's repeated. Therefore, unsaturated hydrocarbon chains tend to be liquid at room temperature oil and then triglycerides with saturated I should have probably had a triglyceride there saturated hydrocarbon chains or solid fats now I have highlighted a lot in that but there's a lot of good information in there which I know I need to know and then I'm literally just going to go oils plants fats animals and that is a 
you know, kind of smaller section that needs to be highlighted, like polysaccharides, triglycerides, represent energy stores, particularly the constituent fatty acids, they're energy rich, and gram for gram they release more energy than carbohydrates, so release more energy than carbohydrates. Mass efficient, it's mass efficient. Lipids are found in seeds, in the greedy birds, and in the camel's hump. Uh, oh, the, as you see, this is a very important fact here. Fatty acids may only be required everybody, therefore the whole thing gets highlighted. Fats are also important in providing thermal insulating layer in mammals. Buoyancy in marine mammals. Cushioning layer around and protection to internal organs. Such the kidneys, that's your example in the questions. Water when respired, metabolic water, gerbils and camels. Now, my biology teacher discovered the other day, whenever he was teaching us this, that actually camels can't really get water from their humps because the amount of water it takes to carry out respiration, to get the energy to release the metabolic water, or means you get less water at the end it was a long pr yeah so to hydrolyze the um fatty or the fat to get the fatty acids using water to hydrolyze it you actually end up with less water overall even though there's more water stored in the fatty acids it kind of broke his heart but yeah that's just how it is but yes we need to know that for exam anyway therefore it will be learned now that was an example of highlighting information in yellow i need to find a good thing of highlighting definitions because there do not seem to be very many definitions here. If so, I will just go back to one I've already done because we haven't got very far at the minute. As you can see, I am back to the start now and I'm going to go through things you highlight would highlight in pink highlighter. So. Here we have uh, quite a few definitions for various things in biology. Element, molecule, compound, ion, macromolecule, and solvent. However, the only thing that I kind of felt like I didn't fully know the definition or wanted like clarification was macromolecules. So I just highlighted in pink a big molecule consisting of smaller molecules linked together. And actually solvent, as although I know what it is, definitions are hard for words like solvent. So I'm actually going to highlight this now the liquid in which the solute is dissolved to form a solution. And I, that's, like, that's the definition you'd give in an exam. You wouldn't actually need to put ions and charged molecules. Solutes are surrounded by water, solvent, and so are separated into solution. That's not really relevant to the definition of solvent, so that doesn't get highlighted. Just as in here, a big molecule, such as a large carbon, that's not like, in the definition. Con then consisting of smaller molecules linked together is also over here. On this page, I highlighted um, the energy required to break the hydrogen bonding in liquid water is known as the latent heat of evaporation. That was something I just put, I highlighted in pink because it was basically already in definition form or it could be like the question in the exam could be, what is the latent heat of evaporation? And you write the energy required to break the hydrogen bonding in liquid water. I didn't need to do anything else. It's not given outside. Therefore, I just highlighted it in pink in text. Over the page here, we have co condensation reaction. Um, so this is a bit different from the other. Oh, well, we're moving a bit there. This is a bit different from the one on this page where I highlighted it in the text. I wanted to have it separate, so I just rewrote the definition and highlighted it in pink. Um, over here, basically it says via a condensation reaction, and then in brackets, it says that basically there. I wanted to rewrite it because it's a very important aspect in this. And therefore, yeah, I'm still recording. Just, oh, just had to check that for a second. Um, as you can see, that's the definition. It's kind of hard to pick out here because it actually starts here and finishes here, but it's in the middle of a sentence, which I didn't really like, so I just took it 
took that out to the side. Then the renewed, oh, tensile strength. I completely forgot to highlight this whenever I was looking over this earlier, because obviously tensile strength is not something you come across very often. So the ability of a material to withstand being stretched, pulled before breaking. That's just something I want to make sure I know. Therefore, I highlight it in pink because it is a definition. Okay, so the next color is the green highlighter, which I use to highlight diagrams. My door just kind of half opened there, that's a bit creepy. Anyway, so in this diagram, I just highlighted that it was amylopectin and glycogen because at this short or this small section, you can you can't tell what which it is, but if it was much longer, you could because glycogen has more branches every eight to ten units, and amylopectin has um, a lot less every approximately twenty six to thirty units, as far as I'm aware. So therefore, there wasn't really much because the textbook highlights the alpha one six linkage and the alpha one four linkage which meant I didn't really need to highlight that, or I would have highlighted that because that's the sort of thing that you do highlight. And then in this diagram down here, I just sectioned off a part of it and I highlighted that it was inverted alpha glucose. Actually, I should also say that the other one is non-inverted. So I will do that right here. I will say that this is just theta glucose. And then I will highlight that in green. Now we, ha now we can see that it is a beta glucose and then the one beside it is inverted. That's just that the diagram didn't say that. I don't think it actually says that in this book. However, that is the case. You can also tell by the glycosidic bonds in between. that Those are these like squarey bits that they are inverted. However, doesn't specifically say, therefore I will specifically say it. Then, as you can see, this table is something else I use a green highlighter for. In tables, it's a bit different. You can short, you can small highlight or, you know, use the tip of the highlighter and just quickly go over some of the, these things, make little highlights, or you can use the whole thing to color in a box. I colored in these boxes if they stood out in any way to other ones, if they're surprisingly different, look, cellulose is the most different, but then again, it's only one made of beta glucose. But yeah, and then amylopectin and glycogen have that one because they contain both alpha-1,4 and alpha-1,6 bonds. And then in this diagram here, I just highlighted that this is a saturated fatty acid and highlighted that this one's an unsaturated fatty acid and circled the um, double carbon bond, which means it is unsaturated rather than saturated. Don't know why I coloured the double bond in yellow, but that just shows you how versatile the system is. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Um, doesn't really matter if you make a mistake. That may have been a mistake. I can't remember why I did it in yellow. It just doesn't really matter, which is nice. And then as I did say earlier, this is part of the diagram. And then on this one, I will I'll be quick to do a quick example of me highlighting this section of text about phospholipids. So as you can see in that, I didn't just use my three highlighters. I also used my black pen. Well, this is my four color pen on pencil. I used this to add in some of my own notes, to add in some things that maybe cross reference to other topics. However, sometimes they, they, they're better putting your head together. So for example, the phospholipid bilayer technically comes under cells. However, I wanted to draw out the diagram beside phospholipids because it's made of phospholipids and therefore 
they kind of just fitted there. So I just wanted to draw out that diagram so that whenever I'm going over them again, I go, ah, yes, there is the false sort of by there. That's what it looks like. And then I go to cells and realize, ah, yes, this is what it does, etc., etc. And then I do seem, I do like highlighting. I highlight a lot. There's a lot of yellow, but it also gets into my head more whenever I'm highlighting because I am like, you have to go over the information and determine the important parts pretty quickly in your head so that then you can highlight it, highlight them. But that going over that in your head means that you do think about it more, does go into your head more and you can learn from that, which I find really helpful, which is why this is stage two or stage three revision process because it's just at the, say at the midpoint of getting it into your head. So thank you so much for watching this video on how I highlight. A bit of a strange one, I know, yeah. But it is might be useful for some of you if you have got these revision books and don't know how to use them. That is how I use them. I also sometimes will make notes from them if my class notes don't have something. I'll just add it into my notes. But usually I just highlight them and I'll read through them. Or if I'm going, like I say, I'm revising for a test in school or a class test or a tracking test, I will go over the information in my class booklets, go over the information in the textbook and then bring those books here to school with me so that I can have just have a look during break or lunch or study or whatever because obviously that's how you make sure it is in your head for that test you do your home revision and then you go in and look over it on the day off because to be honest the day you have your real exam you're going to be looking over your notes before you go in anyway so you might as well be looking them over before you go into a tracking test. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one but before I say goodbye if you like this video and if this did benefit you hit that like button and subscribe if you are new here I release videos every Monday and pretty much every Friday if there's if I don't post a video on Friday don't worry I'm not dead I just don't have one to post the upload schedule obviously does allow me to post two videos a week however sometimes the Friday ones are harder to come up with to be honest because the Monday videos are school related or revision related and the Friday ones are just kind of anything I want. <laughs> so yeah, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!